Welcome back. In section two, we're going to go ahead and actually go right into those group of four design patterns. And the first group among them is the creational design patterns. The creational design patterns are design patterns that relate to the creation of objects. The first of them we're going to meet is the singleton that is intended to for creations where we want to intentionally only have one instance of that specific object. We're going to talk more about that soon. Above that is the factory design pattern, and the factory design pattern is for a process where we want to have a factory that creates objects. Above that is going to be the abstract factory, which is going to be a factory that is a little bit more sophisticated, followed by a builder, which is even more sophisticated. And we're going to wrap up the creational design patterns, taking a look at the prototype design pattern, one that is very native to JavaScript. So let's jump right into the first one, the singleton design pattern. The singleton design pattern is very unique and it really, you need to make sure that you don't overuse it. The second is that singletons have a delayed instantiation. So in scenarios where you don't want some logic group to happen automatically as soon as the application starts, but you only want it to happen and initialize at a certain time, such as maybe data just came in and now it's time to start this object. So one of the features of a singleton that you could control more exactly when you want to instantiate it, and it could be in completely different places because the first time it's used is only when it's going to be instantiated. Keeping constant with it is that we need to have an interface that's easy to access anywhere. So it's a global interface in many ways that every uh, item that needs to use this object will have direct access to it. Last but not least, there's only one instance of this object. So the, the rules are basically is that we're it's a delayed instantiation. It has a constant interface and it could only have one instance in one application. So let's jump right into it and start building our first singleton and seeing it in action. So while you're away, I created a very simple structure that enables me to just add in elements, circles into our application. If you go into your starter file of section two, you'll find in your JavaScript a structure that should look familiar. We have here this module wrapper in line one through 12 that is making sure that we're not in the global scope. And then we have here a jQuery ready command. And when that jQuery ready, when the document is ready, then we're going to have a click event. And after that click event, we're going to basically create a circle, position it, and then add it into the advert section. Now with this as starter file, I'm going to go ahead and start changing almost everything inside of it because my goal is to turn this into a singleton. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable and I'm going to call it circle generator single ton. Now my circle generator singleton is going to basically only instantiate whenever we need it. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap around and create a module, really a module logic that we've seen in previous chapters and instantiate it. Now in this instantiation, I really don't want almost anything to happen. What I want to happen is I want to have a local internal reference inside of the circle generator, which will be called instance. Now the idea behind here is basically the only public things that are going to be available here for the scope beyond here will be the instance itself and a function that will initiate the object. Now in this initiation object, we're literally going to set and position everything. All the properties, all the methods are going to live inside of here because we don't want them to execute and start until we're actually ready to create them. When we're ready to create them then and only then would we actually generate that initial item and return it. But before that, what we're going to do is we're going to return a public property, the only public property and return and the only public pr uh, method really is going to be called get instance. Now the idea behind this get instance is basically whenever we want to fetch this object, it will only then be created. And if it was already created, then we'll just refer back to the instance that we have. With that said, what we need to do is we, we need to ask ourselves, is that instance available? If it's not available, then let's go ahead and create it. So if the instance is not created yet, we're going to go ahead and call the instantiation, which will then return to us our actual object, which we'll, we'll configure soon. Return. It's going to return to us the actual object itself or the public API of that object. And only what we want to be accessible would then become accessible. If it already has been created, or even if not, because we've creating it, if it didn't in the line 12 through 14, we're then going to send ahead that instance giving access to whatever public methods are inside of that init function. 
By creating this relatively complex structure, what we've done here is we made sure that only when we're actually going to need it and we're going to actually call it, only then the object will be created. With that said, let's go ahead and actually create the object so we could actually see it in action. To do that, I'm going to go inside of that init area and literally I'm going to create everything inside of that singleton, everything related to that singleton within the zone between line basically inside of that init. Now, the properties that I'm going to use is going to be A circles because I'm going to create something a little bit more sophisticated. What I want to do is I want to create a reference so I could then create more complex things at a later stage. And with the word stage, I'm going to go ahead here and also create a stage variable because I want to also maybe in the future make sure that my advert could be changed to a different section. I'm not going to do that right now in this lecture, but I'm preparing the groundwork for that type of possibility. Now that I have my private properties, it's time for me to create all the methods that I need for my singleton or for the management of a circle. So I'm going to break down the steps instead of doing it all in one section here, I'm going to break it to the creation for the positioning and for the addition of the elements. So let's start with the create process. So I'm going to go ahead here and create uh, inside of our init, create that create function. The create function will literally, all it really will do is just capture that creation that we've done here in line 30. So I'm going to go ahead and chop that out, go right in there and put that for the create process. And I'm going to go ahead and return that circle to wherever called. All right, so we have the creation process. The next step that we want to do is we also want to create a position function. And I'm going to put that above here. And the reason is because I'm going to make it private just for the sake of the sample here. So the position function is going to accept a few properties. One is going to be the circle that we want to position, the left and the top positions that we want to push into. Now that I've created it, all that's left for me to do is, first of all, I'm going to go and just chop out the actual positioning that we have right here put it all the way in the top here. So instead of positioning it to the left, I'm going to put here the left as the first property and the top as the second property. And that is my positioning. Now I'm going to go ahead and also take advantage of the fact that I decided that the position is going to be a private element. So, you know, I'm going to go here and just set all these stuff to be private. I'm going to make it very visible to me that these are not going to be publicly accessible. And I'm going to go ahead here and inside of the create function, I'm going to call the position and position my new circle and I'm going to position it based on that left and top, making sure that when I create something, I'm going to send in the left and top. So whenever I'm creating a new object, I'm going to send its left and top positions. Beautiful. So we created the position we created the create method. All that's left for me to do in the, in the singleton area is also to create the actual add itself. And the add itself is going to basically accept a circle. And what is it going to do? It's going to basically approach the stage. It's going to append that circle into the stage. What else are we going to do? We also want to add in that circle that we've just created into that array that we've created earlier, which was called a circle. And I'm going to go ahead and push that circle. So we have a reference back to it. Just for the sake of, uh, of playing around with you, I'm going to add here just one more quick function and I'm going to call it index. And the index is literally just going to tell me what index are we in. So I'm just going to return right now the a, a circle length. And that will give me the current index that we're in because the A circle stores all of the information. Now that I've created all the methods and all the properties and the logic should be more or less in place, I really need to expose the properties that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and that's my next step. And I'm going to expose just like we did with the reveal pattern. And I'm just going to list out all the stuff that I want to reveal. So create, I want to reveal and I want to reveal the ad as well. And I decided that I am not going to reveal the position and I'm going to keep that private. All right. So now that I've created the singleton and everything there is configured, all that's left for me is to test it out. And to test that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this structure that I have here and I'm not going to change the click here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of everything here. And inside of my click, I'm going to start configuring the logic that I want to set. So the first step, once our element is ready, I want to get a reference inside of my click area. I want to get a reference to my singleton. Now I'm going to call it CG for 
circle generator singleton and I'm going to reference my circle generator singleton and get that instance. Now, only in this stage, whenever a click happens, only then I'm creating the instance, making sure that I'm pushing the instantiation to a really late step in the process. So I don't have to trigger and create all the logic here that is there. It's just going to sit there and wait for, the, for it to be instantiated. That's a great advantage already at this stage. The next step, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go using that process. I'm going to go and create a new circle. And I'm going to use my CG to create a new circle and I want to configure its position. And because we're inside of this event, I'm going to go ahead and send my page X minus 25 because the radius in my CSS is 25 and I'm going to do the page Y as well. And there we go. We just created a new circle. All that's left for us to do in the next stage is we created it. All that's left for us to do is the CJ add and add that circle in. So it's going to be registered and also added onto the stage. Let's go ahead and test it out and see, first of all, if we have any errors before we continue forward. So I'm going to click here on refresh. And if I just click around, we could see that everything is still working. Our construct is a little bit more complicated. And you might ask yourself, well, why would I want to create something so complicated? And the answer is you probably wouldn't want to do this for every single thing. But when we're working with a singleton, we have an assumption of two things. One is we want to instantiate things late in the game. And the second thing is we want to also make sure that it is accessible to other elements. So for example, if we wanted to create now another logic set here, so let me just go ahead here and I'm going to create another logic set. So after the document is ready, let's say I also want to make sure that there's some sort of a, a key press event going on. So I'm going to go to my document key press and I'm going to go ahead and just quickly create that key press event. And oh, that shouldn't be equal, but we need to wrap this around. Okay, so we created the key press and I'm just going to add here a simple logic. I'm going to ask if the, the event that just happened and the key that was just pressed equals A and only if it equals A, then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get a reference to my CG for my circle generator singleton. It's not going to create a new one if it's already created, but if it's the first time around, then it will create it. Now, next up, I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this logic here, but instead of setting the position X and Y, I'm just going to go ahead here and just create here some sort of math floor and inside of there I'm just going to do a math random and I'm going to duplicate that by 600 let me just break a line here and I'm just going to I'm just going to keep it to the 600 region so I'm just going to go ahead here and just copy this so it's going to be in a squared region of up to 600 pixels by 600 pixels all right all that's left for me to do now is to actually test it out and if I save this go back into my application and click on refresh I'm going to go ahead and click on the a character and if let me just scroll up here and I'll click on the A character, you'll see that now it's going to add as I'm adding it with the A. And if I'm clicking onto the element into my stage area, then I'm also adding the elements. And this is a perfect example of a usage of the singleton pattern. You really want to stay away from overusing the singleton pattern. Really a good place is where you only have one instance and you need it to be available to a lot of different objects or a lot of different scenarios. And it's a big advantage also if you want to instantiate it later down the line, but create all the things in an organized way as we've done in this lecture. In this lecture, we created a singleton design pattern. In the next one, we're going to take our step away from the instantiation of one item into a factory that creates a lot of items. We're going to see why is that useful and in what scenarios would we want to use a factory.